uh, good afternoon one and all so today this is uh, lecture number 32 we are going to start uh, module number 4 in our uh, subject that is ad hoc and uh, sensor network so this module 4 is uh, uh, different in two aspects first is uh, module number 1 2 3 and 5 that you could prepare from the book of uh, manoj so that was a single textbook you had been using uh, for last uh, four modules this module number 4 is uh, not being done from the book of uh, shivram murthy or manoj it is being done from a different book so that book pdf i will upload and you can uh, download that pdf of this book uh, this is one aspect of difference and second aspect is uh, this uh topic wireless sensor network or ad hoc wireless sensor network here we are not going to discuss uh, the basics of ad hoc uh, wireless uh, network so so far we in uh, module number 1 we have seen the mac protocol related issues in ad hoc module 2 we have seen routing related issues module 3 we have seen uh, quality of service related issues of uh, ad hoc wireless network module 5 it was Uh, hybrid kind of uh, network and uh, finally we had seen the advancements in uh, wireless network technology but this uh, wireless sensor network or in short it is known as wsn is a part of the ad hoc wireless network and this is uh, mainly applications that we will be seeing today so this is actually a part of a subset of uh, ad hoc uh, network that you have to understand and whatever course uh, seminars that you have to deliver all will be from this wireless sensor network and uh, some of the topics for that uh, course activity i will show you today in the initial slides only so you can choose from that so we are starting uh, with uh, the module 4 wireless sensor network this part is an interesting chapter lot easier than other uh, modules because we have already completed all the basics related to ad hoc wireless network so here mainly you have to remember the applications uh, what is a sensor node what is topology uh, how uh, what are the different blocks inside a wireless sensor node what are the different applications where you can apply uh, wireless sensor network what is sensing range communication range so many things in this module you will find already i have covered in uh, module number 1 and 2 so lot of slides will be common so which i have already completed in module 1 and module 2 so i'll not go for much uh, explanation in those slides but a uh, lot of common things you will be finding because this topic wireless sensor network is a subset of uh, ad hoc wireless network okay so let us see what are the topics as per your uh, syllabus is uh, concerned so first is there is a wireless sensor node uh, which is developed by barclay a california barclay so they are doing research in uh, uh, this uh, wireless sensor network so this is called mica 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 or mica somebody call it or mot it is called mot so mica mot is a uh, wireless sensor node now we have seen uh, the internal structure of wireless sensor node what are the things inside it again we will see it today so this will be a repetition so that question do i had asked in module 1 that what are the internal structure of uh, wireless sensor node that actually uh, that topic actually belongs to module number 4 okay so here we will see those things initially and uh, one typical application of wireless sensor node which is already developed uh, is mica mode or mica mode you will see that what are the different specifications what are the different sensors what are the different sensor specification uh, what is the power required uh, to run that sensor node how much is the communication transmission power how much is the communication receiving power all these things we will find in case of the uh, specific wireless sensor node known as mica mode or mica mode then we will see this topic it is already seen what is meant by sensing range and what is meant by communication range so on the sensor nodes there are a lot of sensors they can sense up to a certain distance around the sensor node so that is called a sensing range and after sensing the uh, some parameter after sensing some physical phenomenon that data is stored inside the sensor node and after few processing and all 
that data is transmitted over a longer distance for some application because uh, wireless sensor node we are deploying to uh, to gather the data of a certain uh, situation so it can be a agriculture field it can be a battlefield it can be beyond the border uh, military kind of surveillance related uh, application so we are just dropping a lot of sensors there and uh, those sensors are sensing few things and after sensing they are storing the data temporarily within the node memory and whenever required that data is being transmitted to the base station so that is actually uh, the sensing range and communication range and generally it is found that communication range is much much bigger than the sensing range because sensing range is within around the uh, the sensor node maybe 2 meter 5 meter 10 meter but the communication range may be quite big it can be 100 meter 200 meter or 1 kilometer depending on the communication paradigm we are using so sometimes we are using so there are different communication paradigm we can use rf we can use zp we can use bluetooth okay we can use ir okay lora six low pan lot of other things are there so those are the communication technologies so communication range sensing range discussion happened in uh, module 1 or i think module 2 uh, that slide will be again repeated here so let us see so third thing is design issues and challenges of wireless sensor network so this is a common question for every chapter whenever we did the module number 1 we found what were the design issues of mac protocol whenever we did uh, module 2 we found what are the design what are the different issues related to routing in ad hoc wireless network uh, whenever we did uh, module 3 we found what are the different issues uh, in ad hoc uh, wireless network for uh, for offering quality of service so every module is having this uh, question that what are the design issues for that typical topic so if it is a wireless sensor network uh, what are the different design issues and challenges and limitations for wireless sensor network we will see that so it's a common question uh, you have written in ies also so here also we will see some 5 10 points and all the points will be kind of a repetition that mobility is a issue bandwidth is a issue power is a issue so all those things will be common plus some more uh, specific issues for wireless sensor network will come here energy consumption so energy consumption at every uh, previous module we have seen energy consumption so routing uh, how it can convert conserve energy for quality of service how it can conserve energy uh, there was different type of uh, configurations bamac we have seen uh, we have seen rs that is remote access switch we have seen different levels of or processor level and architecture level different level of uh, energy conserving protocols and all those things we have seen so energy consumption and conservation is a very big uh, topic of discussion or very important uh, design issue at every step of wireless sensor network and ad hoc uh, wireless network so here also we will find the energy consumption related uh, discussion then clustering of node so we have seen enough on clustering those slides will be repeated here you know that uh, clustering is actually making it easy for us uh, to sense uh, some parameter within a certain area so one thing is just you spray the sensor or spread the sensor all the sensors are sensing same kind of a data the data is getting redundant repetitive okay and it is being sent back to the base station that is one type second type is we are clustering the sensor nodes and area wise we are dividing that okay this 10 sensor nodes will be uh, taking care of this region then another 10 sensor nodes will be taking care of next region so in that case the redundancy in the data is minimized in that case the data sensing becomes uh, more uh, scientific and uh, with less amount of effort okay so that is clustering so in clustering we have seen there is something called as cluster head okay cluster head is having a little bit more uh, features so cluster head might be having bigger memory a more powerful microcontroller whereas other uh, nodes in that cluster which are common nodes they are not having bigger memory or uh, very uh, good processing power they are just sensing and sending the data to the uh, cluster head whereas at cluster head so cluster head is like uh, i gave you the example cluster head is like the uh, uh, chief minister and uh, total over base station is the prime minister 
and uh, we are the people uh, common people we are the very simple sensor nodes so all the very simple sensor nodes first uh, accumulating the data they are sending it back to the cluster head uh, and cluster head is again uh, taking the inference from their cluster it is uh, finding a decision from all the data and so there is some data processing going on at the cluster head and after that the processed decision or processed inference is sent to the base station okay so it makes the uh, overall sensor network much more smarter job becomes easy so not all the pressure comes on the uh, base station okay so this is actually a part of distributed processing so clustering is actually a part of distributed processing uh that we have already seen more discussions we can do here so this five topics i'll be doing uh and the sixth topic applications of wireless sensor network uh you have to do that okay so i have already told you that the course activity so in course activity i'll be defining uh topics uh from applications of wireless sensor network and i'll be sending you the papers and everybody has to listen to all this uh, uh seminars that your other colleague or peer is delivering so the sixth topic will be a combination of uh, mainly your presentation and if i find some very specific application i will explain one or two uh, applications there okay and while doing uh, the first five topics lot of other applications also will come so there i will explain one or two applications like today we will see <clears throat> the agriculture uh, related wireless sensor network okay so i will explain how the wireless sensor network is uh, helping the agriculture uh, system okay such different applications will come so we have a list of the different applications so this is the outline of the chapter chapter is easy uh, people find this chapter most interesting and uh, a lot of materials are there collected so you can go through uh, my slides you can go through the book uh, the book we have to refer is actually the book of carlos de cordero so this is the author or cordero and agarwal we call it uh, and we are having the soft copy of this book so pdf i'll send you so this is actually the textbook number 5 as per as your syllabus and uh, there is a first edition actually second edition is also available but if it is the uh, first edition then all the topics very sequentially is placed in module number 8 or chapter number 8 of this book so everything you all this uh, uh, thing asked in this module 4 so syllabus module 4 whatever topics are there all the topics you can find very serially serially arranged in uh, the chapter 8 of this book so whenever you get this book uh, for module 4 of the syllabus you can refer the chapter 8 of the book of cordero so there is a second book for us and as far as your syllabus is concerned this is textbook number 5 so from where can you get it uh, all this material uh, that is from page number 403 to 444 you can check here starting pages 403 ending pages 444 so you can find all the topics in the syllabus of module 4 in between 403 to 444 pages and all the applications you can find so 8.7 page number 429 onwards so this things you have to go through okay so depending on your topic you have to go through this topic suppose if i give somebody that uh, his or her uh, presentation topic will be drinking what water quality so monitor the drinking water quality by using uh, wireless sensor network so directly you have to go to uh, page number 435 and you have to see what all they have said and there are a lot of cross references because in these pages there will be a lot of uh, papers uh, mentioned because whatever they have uh compiled in this chapter or in this applications they are actually taken from different papers so that paper you have to download and you have to make a presentation out of that paper plus some other papers if you can find out in the same line so always at the end of any research paper there are a lot of uh, cross references mentioned so at least 3 4 paper you should download from there and compiling all those 3 4 different papers you have to make a presentation of around 10 to 15 slides and your group that means you two together have to present for uh, maximum half an hour on that topic so these are going to be your topic anybody wants to already select some topics from it you can send me an sms sir i want to work on environmental monitoring so that topic will be assigned to you so first come first serve basis whoever uh, selects a topic from here uh, it will be assigned to him or her okay so this is the plan for the course presentation 
Now here it is written from 403 to 444, you'll be finding all these details. And the full syllabus of module from, from, from your syllabus can be found from ad hoc and sensor networks theory and application by the uh, author of Carlos D. Moraes Cordero and Dharma Prakash Agarwal. So this book, a link will be sent to you. You can download this book and keep with you. Download the PDF, it is around 33 MB big. So download the PDF. Now a few of the slides I will show you already. So I'll go a little fast. Uh, you have already seen the slides. So this is a slide which I had shown you in the module one. And uh, it is actually the types of uh, different types of wireless ad hoc networks. So there are four types. Uh, this is the first type. This is a mobile ad hoc network. Mobile does not mean mobile phone. Mobile means it is moving. Okay. And uh, second type is vehicular ad hoc network. Uh, so these were the two different uh, kind of applications. Third type was ad hoc wireless sensor network. So this ad hoc word is not pronounced or you only say wireless sensor network or WSN, but ad hoc word is already there. Ad hoc means it is infrastructure less. It is not permanent. Always the nodes are moving. Always uh, there is a chance that some link will go bad. Some link will die. And if some link dies, then other uh, or some node dies, the other nodes, they pick up the communication and they don't let the communication stop. Okay, so from sender to the receiver, always the data will be conveyed. If not through one path, then through some other path. Okay, so the communication will be seamless and the user will not be able to understand if there is a switching. So previously through link one data was being communicated something happened and uh, the node failed and link failed and uh, suddenly some other route or rerouting happens and instead of this link some another link it picks up the communication of data packets between the sender to the receiver but the user uh, he does not get to understand if there is a rerouting or if there is a rescheduling and all those things so this is called seamless or so there should not be any glitch in the communication part Okay, so that was a third type wireless sensor networks and on this third type of ad hoc uh, wireless network that is ad hoc wireless sensor network this whole chapter is dedicated and the fourth one was WMN or wireless mesh network okay so uh, we are in the third uh, point here so there is a third subset of uh, wireless ad hoc network so this is nothing different. This is also a wireless sensor network. It's also a type of ad hoc network. And what all characteristics are there for ad hoc network? That is bandwidth constraint, energy constraint, mobility, okay, routing issues, congestion, uh, then con uh, contention. Okay, the, all those things will be there in case of uh, wireless sensor network also, plus some more features. So what are the features of wireless sensor network? This is also a repeated slide. Uh, this slide we have seen in module one. Actually, these are all part of module four. So these questions will be asked from module four only. Okay, so features of wireless sensor network, large number of sensor nodes are densely deployed for sensing. So sometimes 500,000 nodes are deployed or spread in one region to sense some parameter. Which parameter? It can be temperature, light, sound, vibration in the surrounding environment. So sensed information is sent to the sync node. So there is a base station, sync node. Okay, so all the informations uh, are not held at the site. Okay, so a lot of sensors are there, which is spread over a bigger region. So from that bigger region, all the information comes back to a central node which is called as a base station or sync node. So sensed information sent back to the sync node, uh, processed and inference drawn. So at the sync node, uh, all the data is fused or fusion of data happens at the sync node. And uh, data is processed and a decision is made or inference is drawn. That uh, this is supposed temperature at different range and from left side of uh, the network, whatever temperature is coming, maybe uh, those temperatures are less of a certain environment. And from right side of the uh, overall area, whatever information is coming, uh, that may be showing higher temperature. Okay. So from that, uh, what is the inference that can be drawn by the uh, base station or sync node? It can, it can uh, draw the inference that whatever are the uh, left side sensors, they are kept in shadow. Okay. So sun is moving 
and uh, whatever uh, left side sensor nodes they are actually kind of is in shadow and the right side sensor nodes are uh, exposed to sunlight hence left side temperatures are giving lesser reading and right side temperatures are giving a uh, smaller reading so likewise by the evening all the sensor nodes will become uh, uh, will be producing less uh, temperature uh, reading then uh, just sitting at the sink node position you will understand that yes the day is over and evening has come because uh, all the sensor nodes are now showing very lesser temperature reading so even if a blind people just by listening to the sense data he can understand whether this is day or night because the temperature data of the environment is continuously uh, tracked continuously captured and sent back to the base station and base station uh, inference is drawn and uh, it is found out whether it is day time night time or what okay so this third line is very important sensed information is sent to the sink, sink node it is processed and inference is drawn inference means a final decision what is the understanding from this data so a lot of data you are producing but just compiling of all the data gives some kind of inference or some kind of understanding about the data okay that is also uh, done automatically so uh, the microcontroller itself can find out some kind of inference as far as the as per the lookup table set into it so nodes use short range uh, radio communication not necessary always it will use short range it can use short range long range both depending on the application collaboration among sensor nodes happen with multi hop propagation so uh, i have shown you the clustering so there is a uh, tier 1 tier 2 tier 3 uh, nodes so if you want to send the data from a sync node to the very remote sensor node or very remote sensor node it has picked up some data it has to be sent back to the sync node then directly it cannot send so it has to take a few hops so from tier 3 where it is sensed then one hop it comes to tier 2 then from tier 2 it takes another hop it comes to tier 1 and after tier 1 one more hop and it comes to the uh, sync node okay so collaboration among nodes happen with multi hop propagation intermediate nodes act as relay node for multi hop transmission we have seen that uh, between the transmitter or receiver or between the sender and receiver there are a lot of repeater nodes which are helping the data transfer as well as routing small size nodes can be very small so some nodes are shown at the below so you can see that this is the nip of a, a pen and this is a wireless sensor node how small it is this one this is kept on the tip of a finger okay this is b this is called eco c h o u chao and first one is xbo or micamot xbo okay this is uh, zs z e s s okay and third one these are modes eco modes okay we will be studying our mica modes these are eco modes and fourth one they are called as dots okay these dots are produced by barclay so these are very small kind of sensor nodes Uh, with uh, embedded sensors with embedded microcontrollers and energy devices and they are actually uh, spread over a larger area they can sense all the data and send back to the sync node that is its job so all the sensor nodes are very small sometimes it is le less than a cc that is cubic centimeter it has embedded os like tiny os so there is a specific uh, operating system designed for uh, this kind of wireless sensor network application which is called as tiny os so 15 20 years back when i started uh, reading <coughs> the different sensor network papers for my mtech study at that time tiny os was quite a hot topic okay but now a lot more smarter lot more concise and more uh, strong kind of os there in the market for wireless sensor network and uh, wireless sensor network is actually the previous stage of iot So whatever IoT you are doing now, uh, the concept started from wireless sensor network. So you can say the evolution of wireless sensor network has gone into IoT. Then from IoT it has gone to IoE, that is Internet of Everything. Okay. So likewise things are evolving, but uh, the sensor network or wireless sensor network, it is it was there and it evolved into IoT. So those who want to work in the field of IoT, please understand uh, the different issues related to. wireless sensor network so all nodes designed to perform with minimum power consumption it is always told to you that uh, saving power scavenging power in uh, ad hoc uh, wireless network is a very big issue because more amount of power you are saving you know, the lifetime of the node 
or lifetime of the node battery increases that increases the lifetime of the node that increases the lifetime of the whole network so there are, are very smart power usage strategies protocols uh, algorithms they are designed in every uh, wireless sensor nodes so main very main two jobs are one is uh, saving of energy at every step at every second at every breath of uh, the node and second thing is uh, there is a constraint in the bandwidth also okay because bandwidth is not uh, wide bandwidth is not allocated to all the nodes very constraint small bandwidth is allocated to all the nodes but then also a huge amount of data is to be transferred using that narrow bandwidth so that is another challenge that is there for a uh, wireless sensor network so all nodes designed to perform with minimum power consumption these are the features we are discussing for wsn nodes can perform unattended in autonomous environment so once you deploy some nodes in the uh, forest or maybe near a volcano or maybe in the forest to track forest fire every day we are not going to go and check that it is deployed means uh, it is live it is deployed maybe it is having some latency okay maybe it's having some sleep time in between but does not mean that the network is dead or nodes are dead nodes are always alive as soon as there is a fire or as soon as there is some animal which is coming uh, around to it so a lot of wsns are deployed in jungles to track the animal or to find out animal count okay so as soon as there is an animal near to it as soon as there is a fire or maybe some as soon as there is a flood or something uh, at that time this nodes will get fully activated and relay the information back to the sync node so we won't have to go to the nodes every time uh, as long as they are having battery as long as having it is not a falling short of power these nodes will keep on working autonomous manner so nodes can perform unattended in an autonomous environment nodes are deployed for sensing in adverse difficult areas so very difficult area like flood has happened very difficult area like inside the mine okay very difficult area suppose at the top of a tree okay and very difficult area suppose is a very highly polluted city like delhi you want to measure how much is the particle uh, suspending in the air or how much is the air pollution coefficient uh, in those cases where human cannot go or cannot go frequently we can deploy this kind of wireless sensor network so these are like our ears and eyes uh, at a far distance so it can work like that and with the advent of iot with the advent of laptop electronics it has been a very powerful batteries have also become very powerful so now all these inventions together are after wireless sensor network and iot so very good applications very interesting applications are developed we will be discussing some of them one by one nodes are deployed for sensing in adverse difficult areas <clears throat> so i gave you example like uh, under the ocean maybe inside a forest or maybe in a very polluted city like delhi or maybe below the uh, mine a coal mine and all in all those places in adverse or difficult places areas we can deploy wireless sensor network so wireless sensor network can both be mobile as well as stationary it depends on the application what are the applications so some of this can be your uh, course activity topic so temperature sensing uh, humidity level sensing humidity and level sensing sensing the light conditions in a room whether every nook and corner of the room is lighted or there are some dark positions we can find out very easily by wireless sensor network industrial air pressure sensing okay soil parameter testing this agriculture related application we will see shortly noise level sensing in automobile industries because at certain times in automobile industries it is so noisy that it might harm our ear okay that we don't want to do we don't want to harm our ear so what we will do is we will deploy some uh, sensors or some acoustic sensors that will sense the data that will tell that yes this sound is of this much decibel and it will stop okay so noise level sensing in automobile industries is a very big application of wireless sensor network the next is vibration sensing in automobile industry so vibration of automobile industry vibration is like a you can say the signal uh, found out from a stethoscope so any uh, car you just uh, listen to the way it uh, runs the way it starts uh, and while running if there is coming some kind of specific uh, sound from it so from all the sounds we can tell what is the condition of the car or automobile 
okay hence vibration sensing of in automobile industries this is a very important job and uh, generally automobiles are designed a big car or big truck or something or maybe a ship or maybe airplane so not possible for human being to go every corner and uh, uh, sense the vibration so instead we can fit that airplane or car or ship uh, by a lot of sensors and we can bring all those sensor data in one position through wireless communication or wired uh, sensor network is also there okay so if there the power loss is more because wire eats up a lot of power okay and wire actually increasing the cost uh, of the overall network so wireless sensor network uh, is a very flexible and very dynamic uh, and very smart kind of a thing it's it has found its application in many fields okay so here one thing is shown so within this area you want to sense how much is the temperature so this may be one big room so you deploy a lot of sensors so one sensor if you are deploying if that goes bad or if, if that generates a wrong reading then whole information given to the sync node will be wrong so instead you deploy instead of one you deploy some 10 different sensors and uh, let all the 10 uh, measure uh, temperature and there will be little variation in every sensor reading so if you can take the average of uh, reading at any instant from all these 10 sensor nodes that will be the average room temperature so for finding out average room temperature or average uh, magnitude of any parameter instead of one if we apply a network of sensors in that case the measurement will be very good so this is what is said uh, what is shown by this figure so this is the data node data node or sync node so all the data is coming and getting sync sinking into it sinking means it is uh, going deep into it okay so all all data from all the local sensor nodes are given back to the base station or data sync node and in this data sync node all the sensor data are fused so data fusion occurs and from the fused data at the data sync node which is having very big memory which is having very good processing uh, capability or very highly powerful microcontroller so from all this small small data from many various uh, nodes all the data when it comes to the sync node sync node sits with all the data makes all the data processes all the data and find out what is the inference uh, of uh, that sensing parameter within this region so this is actually a very crude kind of a diagram of a uh, sensor uh, topology so here uh, there is an application it is discussed so this is given in a paper so the paper i will send to you it is said that so if you are asked uh, this kind of diagram you can draw or rather you can draw this kind of diagram so these two diagrams are same okay here this is uh, this is the application area you can say this is that agricultural fields so whatever is shown here this whole agricultural field big area actually this is that agricultural area okay and i am the owner of that uh, very big agricultural field maybe it's a 10 acre of land but i am sitting at in london or i am sitting in us but i want to know what's happening to the uh, agricultural field of mine whether it is full with water so maybe i have put some sugar cane here sugar cane requires a lot of water so sitting at uh, london or sitting at us i want to find out whether it is properly irrigated or not okay whether the soil quality is good or not whether there is any kind of bugs in the soil okay whether humidity is proper or not for uh, sugarcane cultivation okay so all those all whether temperature and air flow is right or not for sugarcane uh, production all these parameters can be tracked from very far okay so only this much and uh, without internet and all this was wireless sensor network previously now we have put internet uh, in this so all this in, in, in this is the agricultural area and inside uh, there are a lot of sensors so it is written here ad hoc wireless embedded network for precision agriculture precision agriculture means there will not be any wastage of land okay all the land will be properly uh, cultivated and uh, all the whatever saplings and small trees you are putting there it will be uh, utilized properly the space will be utilized properly there should not be any wastage of water very big thing there should not be any overheating there should not be any uh, deposition of water on the soil so if water gets deposited clogged in the soil the trees will get rotten within one or two days so nothing of that sort nothing of that disaster should happen here okay and this wireless sensor network so these are all sensors 
these are all sensors put on the uh, soil okay here it is shown at the top but actually these sensors is, is exactly kept at the bottom on the soil exactly at this point okay and you can say that this this is a kind of a cluster yeah, this is a kind of a cluster where these three are the sensor nodes and this this is the cluster head okay here this is also a cluster cluster of four uh, sensors so this position uh, humidity uh, water humidity and uh, soil moisture all this data has been sent to this local cluster head so this is like the uh, chief minister of this area of this province at this point whatever is the soil moisture whatever is the humidity, whatever is the temperature, it is sent back to this uh, local cluster head. Same for this part, this. Part. And a local cluster head, uh, there is also uh, occurring some kind of uh, data fusion. Okay, and after that, uh, this local cluster head through one hop, two hop and three hop. Okay, so this is from here to here is one hop, from here to here is one hop, from here to here is one hop. So all the sensors are sending data to the data sink in one hop distance. No problem. After little bit of processing, not thorough processing, not final processing, but local processing. Okay, so some memory is there. Some processing power is given to this uh, cluster head. So after little bit of processing, so little bit of processing also reduces the job of base station or data sink. After a little bit of processing, then this data, that is the inference, is sent to the base station by first hop, second hop, and third hop. So base station is there within this. Base station is actually the head office, head office of data. So in base station, all the data are to go, and in base station, the final decision uh, will be made. Okay. So uh, this are the local data. These are the local data. And here uh, from the base station, the data is being sent over internet. So this is the global connection or the gateway for this network is there within the uh, sync node okay so how the local data can reach the sync node that is actually topology so you can see here this is a local data so there are three four all those things so as i have shown here this is a local data one local data two local data three they are being sent to cluster head one here it is not shown like that here a b c all the nodes are having same priority but here all the three different nodes are having lower priority cluster head is having little higher priority okay so if you can draw this diagram or if you can draw this diagram anything will do but here also you can just add one and two more uh, communication link and you can make b as the cluster head and you can say that from node a k and m so this you can make as k this you can make as m and you can join it here you can join it here so you can say from a k and m all the local sensor data comes to the uh, cluster head B. And after that, cluster head B sends the data to the data sink. So the data sink is there in this hut. Okay. So uh, by C, D, E node, and through this link, all the local data is sent to the sync node. From sync node, it is uh, connected to the internet because the gateway is there at the sync node. Then it is connected to the internet and satellite. And from that satellite, it can go to any part of the universe, any part of the world. Okay. So I am sitting at the America or I am sitting at London and I am able to find out what's happening in the my agriculture field. Okay. So this is the wireless sensor network topology. You have to explain this, but only change you have to make is make this AKM. Three nodes you make and three nodes you connect to B. So B is the cluster head. AKM nodes are the local sensor nodes. They are sending the data to B. B is sending the data to C, D, and E, and from there to sync node. So through four or five hops, the data is given to the sync node. From sync node, the data goes to internet or satellite, and from there it goes to the task manager. Task manager send it to the user. Okay. So this is kind of a uh, overall structure of the sensor network topology. So uh, in for agriculture, you can mention the parameters. So sensor detect the temperature, light level, soil moisture, hundreds of points across the peak. So such hundreds of points are there. So here only I have shown three, here to five, and here to eight. So only eight parameters are shown here, and other nodes are router. So this cluster head, this thing, this thing, and this, they are all router. This is a cluster head, this node, and this node, they are called as router. This is a cluster head, then there is router one, two, and there's a common routing point. 
okay likewise it goes so what are parameters we can sense temperature light levels soil moisture hundreds of points across the field the system communicates the data and over a multi hop network for analysis so multi hop network you can check so this cluster head sends the data to the base station with one two and three hops one two and three hops like this what are the application possibilities for miniature wireless sensing uh, inventory or asset tracking so you go to places like dmart or you go to a very big warehouse okay whatever uh, packages whatever packets are coming uh, they are placed in a proper place and whenever uh, somebody wants to retrieve the uh, data or somebody wants to retrieve the goods uh, they again come back and all that uh, things are tracked whichever was placed previously very safely in some place so warehouse there may be thousands or 10000s of uh, packages packets so it's like a, a post office all those thing comes together and they are placed in a very proper uh, scientific manner they are stored and they are retrieved okay so inventory or asset tracking so if it is a place like dmart or shopping mall uh, how many of which things are coming how many are getting sold and how many are remaining how many have got perished kharab ho gaya sad gaya they have to be uh, returned all those things can be uh, solved or all those problems can be made easy by using a uh, wireless sensor network inventory location awareness that whatever thing comes where exactly that thing is placed or stored okay so through rfid tag through some iot and other things we can uh, find that exactly where the thing is stored okay, so that is a sensor network type of problem roadside traffic pattern we have explained vanet in detail and open parking spot detection there also you can use so for every parking slot you can put a sensor whichever sensors are giving you vacant uh, those uh, vacant slots you can display by using some kind of display mechanism and as soon as uh, the car comes and it gets parked there uh, that vacant slot is uh, not there in the vacant list anymore so you have to now append the list so likewise the roadside traffic pattern and open parking spot selection or detection it can be a wireless sensor network based project individual plant monitoring for precision agriculture so i told you what is meant by precision agriculture not a any area in the agriculture field should be unattended every area should be wired every area should be having good amount of sensor so that you can understand what is the temperature what is soil moisture what is humidity what is the gas levels that is n2 o2 co2 at that point everything of this data which are uh, assisting agriculture all this data at every point of uh, the agriculture field should be monitored continuously so that is actually called as uh, individual plant monitoring for precision agriculture so even if it's a very big field but we can track every simple point single point within that environmental or habitat monitoring indoor and outdoor so environmental monitoring may be uh, rain monitoring flood monitoring uh, gas monitoring pollution monitoring uh, within a certain area and at indoor and outdoor obviously within home also you can find out how much is the light intensity how much is the uh, oxygen uh, concentration all those things we can use uh, what is meant by habitat habitat means suppose in this jungle how many uh, tigers are there in this jungle how many elephants are there so we are trying to put some kind of capsule some kind of tag on the elephants and all and uh, they always uh, come to a certain place every day maybe they come to drink water so near the river near the lake we can keep some kind of uh, data sync node so with some camera or something or with some maybe uh, another rfid tag or something so as soon as uh, those animals or habitats come near that uh, base station or sync node uh, their presence is registered so the way they say so there are only 4000 tigers remaining in india today okay so do we go and count it uh, one by one it is not like that so it's a kind of a statistical estimation and now it is it can be counted by means of a uh, wireless sensor network uh, of habitat monitoring type advanced building security and automation so building automation is a very big application of wireless sensor network all the amenities all the uh, facilities and maybe uh, we want burglar alarm or something so for uh, security as well as for uh, comfort or uh, all the information of the uh, building attracted and uh, saved at every moment 
if there's an accident, how did the accident occur? How did the fire broke? All those things can be found out over a certain time by using wireless sensor network. Military applications for troop movement detection, blanket field with no sense uh, sensors to detect, okay, use for physical security based application. So during your seminars, you have to discuss all these things. So for civil engineering problem, fire, flood, earthquake, seismic and structural monitoring, integrating thousands of sensing and control points could provide new insights about society, environment and world. So there is something called as crowdsourcing. Okay, so you can just find out what is meant by crowdsourcing, uh, whatever uh, data a crowd is putting on Facebook at a certain point. Okay, so like uh, you can say Mysore, there is a, a palace. So whatever crowds are there, they are just taking a photo and they are putting it on uh, Facebook, they are putting it on WhatsApp and other thing. So you just, uh, depending on any place, depending on any time or position, you just try to find out how many photos were uploaded uh, at that point of time by all the visitors of that place. And from all those uh, photos, you try to find out some inference. Okay, so this is a new uh, term, crowdsourcing. A lot of research is going on to understand what is the mob psychology, what is the mob mentality. Okay, so crowdsourcing is a very important thing. So there we are actually integrating thousands of sensing and control points, thousands of data, photo, text. We are gathering and we are mixing them to find out an inference that what kind of thing the crowd is liking or what kind of thing the crowd is disliking. To know that uh, this uh, mixing thousands of data points is very much important. Biomedical application, industrial automation, health and wellness application and future consumer application, including smart home offices, all those things are there. Okay, so these are applications and apart from that also some more applications are there. When I define the course activity topic to you, you will come to know. So what are the main constraints of ad hoc wireless network? This is an old slide you have already seen. Uh, this is an infrastructure less system. That means there is no uh, head, there is no central access point who is controlling the overall network. So it's a kind of a distributed kind of a network. All the peer nodes, all the nodes have to be talking to each other. All the nodes have to be connected to each other uh, to sharing the data, to share the data, to share each other's information. And finally, they come to one uh, new control paradigm. So uh, there is no head as such. When there is no head, all the uh, sensor nodes inside the sensor network becomes head itself. But he cannot take single decision it's a collaborative decision kind of a thing. So if there is no specific head for a group, every member in that group together uh, with some discussion, they take the decision. So a uh, uh, wireless sensor network is kind of a collaborative network. And instead of a single person taking decision in wireless sensor network, it always happens as a collaborative uh, decision making. Okay. Dynamically changing network topology. I told you that uh, wireless sensor network is having a huge mobility issue. So every time the sensor nodes are moving from one place to another, in that case, keeping the connectivity is one issue, as well as uh, frequent route change and packet loss is another issue. But then also we want a seamless kind of connectivity. How can we attend that? We have to check. So this is a very important routing issue in case of wireless sensor network. Physical layer limitation. So physical layer is where all the uh, sensors, all the basic circuits and everything is there. This is the lowest layer in OSI model. So radios used generally in broadcast mode with limited power and range. This leads to issue like hidden and exposed terminal problem. So few nodes trying to catch or send data to the same, same receiver. Same receiver is trying to accept data from many transmitter. Okay, if one transmitter receiver pair is communicating, then all other transmitters are not able to transmit. So this is actually called as hidden terminal problem and exposed terminal problem. As there are many nodes in wireless sensor network, there is bound to happen some kind of hidden and exposed terminal problem. How can you solve that? There's a challenge. Limited link bandwidth, I told you that constant of bandwidth and constant of energy. These are two issues always will be existing in case of ad hoc network. In that case also, we should be able to communicate huge amount of data within a uh, shorter period of time. How can we do that? We'll discuss. What are the common challenges? Scalability is a problem. So for maybe four or 10 uh, small sensors, the sensor network works fine. 
But if we are trying to put such 500 sensors uh, in a wider place, in that case, uh, the routing protocol might not work. So whatever work for small number of small set of sensors, the same protocols, same uh, in networking might not uh, be correct or might not be uh, fruitful when the network become big. So for 10 sensors, one network protocol, QS, it's okay. Whenever 100 sensors is put, that protocol might not occur. So this is the scalability problem. Providing acceptable levels of service even with large number of nodes. Output decreases at a rate of square root of n, where n is the number of nodes. So if we are increasing the uh, network node by 100 times, the output will reduce by 10 times. That is what said, output decreases or throughput decreases at a rate of square root of n, where n is the number of sensor nodes. So if I'm trying to increase the uh, node 100 times, in that case, the output will reduce by 10 times. It will not increase, but the output accuracy will increase. So there are two things. One is uh, output signal strength, another is output accuracy. Output accuracy is directly proportional to the number of sensor nodes. More is the number of sensor node, more will be the accuracy of the output. But power at the output will keep on reducing if the node in the WSN is increased. Two things, remember. Quality of service, so data should reach the destination within time. Data packet should not get lost and data should not get changed. So there should not be any physical change in the data. So if it's a Wi-Fi system, if it's a high fidelity system, uh, whatever is the data quality, whatever is the, the count, that should be kept intact. And data will be transmitted from the source to the receiver within a specified pre-specified period of time that we have to ensure in that case it is called as quality of service so offering guarantee for bandwidth delay jitter packet loss probability bandwidth unpredictable change in rf channel ca character with all these problems wireless sensor network has to produce three things that is qs within a specified time data will reach the number of packet transmitted will be number of packets received and the data should be unaltered from the transmitter to the receiver. In that case, we can say WSN is giving quality of service. Energy efficiency required at every node because we cannot go and change the battery every time. So more is the uh, battery lifetime, more is the node lifetime, more will be the network lifetime. The last one is security. Security is a very big issue because all nodes are open. They are using RF band. RF band is uh, being used by many other people. Okay, So everybody wants to tamper others' data. That should not happen. Okay. So by using wireless sensor network, we have to uh, ensure security as well. So security uh, for wireless sensor network is really a challenge. So what is the main challenge is heterogeneity. That is, there are a lot of different types of uh, devices. There are a lot of different uh, power level of devices. There are different techniques of forwarding packet or routing. There are different communication uh, paradigms used within one network. So it's highly heterogeneous. So all these heterogeneous things are put together and a topology is made. Okay. So in that case, we should be able to give proper communication even if there is a heterogeneity. So what is the need of sensor node? Uh, the goal is deeply network system with pervasive networking. Pervasive means spread throughout. Everywhere within the agriculture field, there should be the sensor. There should not be any area within the agriculture field that should be left unattended. Okay, that is called pervasive networking. That is the main goal of wireless sensor network. 98% of all processors are not in traditional desktop computer system. Okay, they are mainly in the field. They are for household application, they are for military application, they are for underwater machines on factory floors and all those things. Okay, so 98% of them are in the field. Uh, add reliable wireless communications and sensing functions to the billions of physically embedded computing devices to support the ubiquitous network computing. So this is the main parameter or this is the main paragraph where the motto of sensor network is being explained. That is add reliable wireless communication and sensing functions to billions of physically embedded computing devices to support ubiquitous network computing. That means uh, another five, 10 years, we'll be finding every device in our home is fitted with some kind of uh, sensor and some kind of uh, communicating or internet communicating device. 
whatever the real success of internet of everything so ubiquitous means it is everywhere okay so every devices at our home should be connected with the internet automatically they will produce the data and the data will go and get stored in the internet distributed wireless networks is a collection of embedded sensor devices with networking capabilities okay so distributed wireless sensor network means there is no head as such it's a infrastructure less system uh, it's a collaborative kind of a signal processing and collection of embedded sensor devices with networking capabilities so many devices i'm telling you uh, they will be having <clears throat> they will be having internet connectivity they will be having sensors fitted in it when all these machines all these devices start talking each other start exchanging information with each other then only there will come real automation and for that we need ai and other things these are the basic components of wireless ad hoc nodes we have seen this so main components is uh, the processor which is there at the heart of uh, any sensor node and with that storage facility is there so this is for a bigger or this for a cluster head kind of a thing not every node will be having a uh, storage okay so a good powerful node in the uh, wireless sensor network that internal structure is explained here okay so main <clears throat> thing within any wireless node is the processing unit or uh, processor central processor or microcontroller with storage and uh, data is sensed so there are certain sensors so it can be temperature humidity and uh, <clears throat> uh, gas concentration pollution con concentration all the sensors are connected to this uh, sensor node so this is actually the internal structure of a sensor node so all the sensors are picking up data in analog form so that has to be given to the processor so that's why there is a adc in between so all this analog sensor data is converted to digital and given to the processor now this process data has to be now transmitted to the base station that's why there is a transceiver Okay, either uh, this processor, either this node will be talking to the base station or to the local sensor node. So you can say this is a cluster head uh, node architecture. This is uh, at tier two. So at tier one, all the very simple sensor nodes are there, which are sensing the local parameters. Okay. So uh, transceiver is actually the communication paradigm through which uh, these processors are talking to the base station and to the tier one. Uh, sensors which are deployed all around the field okay, so these are the three main uh, devices main blocks or subsystems inside uh, sensor node and every stage is requiring some kind of energy so there can be a power generator or there can be a battery so a lot of sensor nodes uh, they are fitted with some kind of active power generator okay uh, the, it may be a fuel cell it may be some kind of uh, maybe uh, some other methane uh, can be used for power generation. It can be a diesel generated, some kind of a power. So a lot of things are there in very miniature size. Okay. So from there, the power generated, uh, the energy processing and distribution unit, it is there. So power comes from the generation unit to the processing and distribution unit. And you can check that this processing and distribution power unit is connected to every other unit of the devices. So this uh, energy processing and distribution unit has to connect every other unit within the uh, network or every other subunit within the uh, sensor node. Okay. These two are special units. One is location finding system, so GPS and all these things can be fitted with it. And what is mobilizer? Some node uh, may have wings, some node may have uh, flagella that it helps it into swim. Some nodes might have some kind of small wheel. Okay, so those are the mobilizers. So mobilizers are taking the energy from the power unit uh, to move from one place to the another. Okay. So uh, the nodes which are uh, with special features, that is mobility feature, okay. in that case, the power usage will be more. So location finding system that anywhere the node is, it will be able to identify what is its global position. This is location finding system and mobilizer. They are the special units. Sensor, ADC, processor, storage, transceiver, they are the uh, regular unit and uh, power generation and power processing and distribution. They are the uh, power unit of the uh, sensor node. So there are mainly three types. One is special unit, one is regular unit, <coughs> and another is the energy-based unit. Okay. So if this question is asked, you have to draw this diagram and you have to explain every uh, unit like this. So this diagram actually I have uh, written, uh, I have uh, prepared in my way. So a sensor node is made up of 
four main basic components sensing unit which is there at the left side processing unit which is there at the center so processing is having storage also transceiver unit this is for the communication part and power unit okay so power unit is also within the basic main components mobilizer and location finding system which are there at the top they are special units so there might be some nodes which might not have location finding or mobilizer but below all these units are a must okay so these are the uh, basic components are there for all the sensor nodes and top components are there for special type of sensor nodes so here you can check which are the basic units and which are the special units so these two red mobilizer and location finding these two are special units whereas all the top thing sensing power generator power sca scavenging transceivers small memory all these are basic units and these are some of the sensor nodes which are produced by uh, uc barclay so this is quartz dust just check what is the size of it that's why this coin is kept aside ucla wins this is another node rockwell wins and this is what is called as barclay mica mode so just check how small it is. So you see Barclay Smart Dust, it is very small. Maybe it is five millimeter or so. This is another uh, sensor waves produced by JPL. It is also small. And you see Barclay, that is University of California Barclay. They have produced quartz dust. Dust means it is very cheap. And these are very small. Uh, they can be just sprayed uh, over an area to sense uh, some information and send it back. That's why it is called as dust. Okay. So here, this is the uh, circuit or this is the system that we are going to check next time onwards. So this will be our topic for the next day. That is tomorrow. Please attend the sessions. It is called Barclay uh, Mika Mode Subsystem.